In this segment, we're going to take a look at gradient stitch spacing. And there's a tool for that found on the editing toolbar here at the bottom of your workspace. It's called Gradient Fill. So what I'm going to do is just create a simple satin line and then take a look at what gradient stitch spacing does for that satin line. So there's your standard satin stitch column. And all I'm going to do now is simply select that and turn on the gradient fill. Now you can see right away what the gradient fill is doing, um, but it's a little bit distracting having the underlay underneath. So I'm just going to use this button to turn the underlay off. And perhaps I'll even zoom in a little closer so we can get a good look at this. So basically, gradient fill starts with one density and gradually gets more and more and more open until it ends at a much more open density. Now, if I open up the object properties for this satin column, it's a satin line two millimeters wide. And we can see here that there's a tab for gradient fill and I'm going to go ahead and open that tab up. Now the first thing you can see is that it's checked marked which means it's been turned on. And then we have four different profiles that you could choose from. And basically you've got an increasing linear profile, decreasing linear profile, then you have a convex profile and a concave profile. Now um, I'll show what the different ones look like because I think that's the easiest way to get the idea. But generally speaking, each one of these profiles has a minimum spacing, sorry, a minimum spacing and a maximum spacing. So right now, the minimum spacing is set at 0.8 and the maximum spacing is set at 2. And so what that's what you can see here, I'll just move this over, is that at this side of the column, the density is 0.8 of a millimeter between rows and it gradually gets more and more open until it reaches the other side where it's a full two millimeters in between the rows of stitches. Now, if I change the profile from the increasing to decreasing, you'll see that if I say, okay, it basically reverses the order and sews from um, the right to the left as opposed to the left to the right. So that's the difference between increasing and decreasing. Now let's take a, th a look at the other two gradient fill profiles. This one's called convex. And what happens is it starts out with the sort of higher density, becomes more open in the center, and then returns back to that higher density on the ends. And the opposite, the fourth option, the concave option, will give you the opposite, where it's more open on the ends, becomes to the sort of higher density in the center and then more open on the ends again. So this is something that you can use and there's all sorts of ways that you can find to use gradient stitch spacing. For example, maybe you want to create um, the sky and you're going to layer two colors together and get it to look like um, you know different shades of blue fading off into white. And you could use the gradient spacing to help you layer the colors together and have the stitching gradually getting less and less. Um, you can use the gradient stitch spacing not only on satin stitches, but on weave stitches too. So for example, if I just create a, a parallel weave rectangle and turn on the gradient spacing, you'll see that, whoops, I need to select that object first, and I can turn on the gradient spacing. I'll turn off the underlay, and then you're able to see it a little bit better. Um, one of the things that I find you know, changing the stitch direction perhaps to something more like 90 degrees might make it a little bit more... Um, apparent what you're trying to accomplish with it. Anyway, that's the gradient stitch spacing and it's simply a button that you can turn it on and turn it off. And of course in the object properties you have the ability to adjust the settings for the profile and the minimum and the maximum values for the gradient stitch effects.